Hello and welcome back to my channel and to my second history walk around Colchester. In this video we'll look at some impressive Roman remains and the story of Colchester's connection to a famous elephant. But I'm starting here by the town's walls and one of Colchester's execution sites. The history of Colchester is absolutely fascinating and spans 2,000 years. But the political scene of England was changing in the mid 16th century and Colchester was about to see its bloodiest period. During the reign of Mary I from 1553 to 1558, Colchester saw more executions than any other town in Britain. People were burnt at the stake for their beliefs. Mary was a, was a Catholic and all those burnt were, were Protestant heretics or so they were accused of being Protestant heretics. That was not always the case. On the 2nd of August 1557, Colchester was to see its bloodiest day with 10 executions in one day, four in the afternoon in the Castle Bailey and six where I'm sitting right now outside St Mary's at the Walls. Those six who were condemned to death were led from their cells inside the Moot Hall located on Colchester's High Street and taken in a procession out through the Western Postern, the Balkan Gate, to this position where I'm sitting now. Here they were tied to the stake. A crowd of people watched as the flames consumed them. Multiple burnings were fairly common and throughout the country the history books list quite a number. Um, on the 23rd of August 1555, six were burnt in one go in Canterbury. On the 18th of June 1557, seven in the middle of Maidstone. 22nd of June 1557, and ten were burnt at the stake in Lewis. But most shocking of all was in, but the most shocking of all was in Bow in East London. On the 27th of June 1556, because 13 people were burnt at the stake in one go. 11 men and two women. One of the women was pregnant. These people became known as the Stratford Martyrs and there's a memorial to them behind St John's Church in the middle of Bow, East London. But let's get back to talking about Colchester. Now, the Roman walls of Colchester were built in 61 AD following Boudicca's revolt and the destruction of Roman Cumulutinum. However, the siege of Colchester also had an impact on the town. But when the siege had finished, the Roman walls of the town were actually, actually still intact. And it was Sir Thomas Fairfax that gave the order for the town walls to be pulled down. He gave the task to one of his trusted men, a man called Sir Thomas Honeywood. And Honeywood was, was fairly local, and so was his wife, Hester. And his wife actually liked Colchester. She liked the Roman walls. She liked the charm of the old town. And it was through her personal intervention that her husband, that her husband only pulled down some sections of the town wall. So as far back as 1648, we have an example in history of a wife telling her husband what to do. But probably the best feature about the Roman walls is the western postern of Colchester, or the Balkan Gate as it's known. When I first came to Colchester about 20 years ago, I parked in St Mary's car park just behind me. And I walked across the footbridge and I was greeted by the Balkan Gate. And I walked through the Roman arch, as people have been doing for 2,000 years, and I was incredibly excited. I'm excited now to be walking through this arch. And I think of all the people that have walked through it over the years. to the Balkan Gate today is just one pedestrian arch but there would have been four two wider central arches to allow carts into the town 
flanked either side by two pedestrian walkways. And those walkways flanked on either side by a guardhouse. The Roman walls stretched 1.7 miles all around the circumference of the town. And there were also a number of posterns as well, entrance gates into the town at various intervals. But what's interesting for me is the, the construction of the walls. They were made of mud and stone, or septaria, as it was known. And these were interspersed with uh, lines of Roman brick, known as bonding tiles. These not only gave strength to the wall, but also gave uh, quite, a, quite a pleasing polychromatic look as well. Just behind me is the, uh, the Mercury Theatre, which is currently undergoing some, um, some modernisation. The theatre opened on the 10th of May 1972 and designed by the architect Norman Downey. It was built on the site of, a former, of the former rectory to St Mary's at the Walls. And that rectory was home to the famous um, Colchester historian Philip Morant who wrote his book The History and, and Antiquities of Colchester back in 1748. Over the centuries, quite a number of vicars have lived in the vicarage. But in the 1880s, the vicar was a man called John Irvin. And he objected to the new water tower that was going to be built next to his vicarage. And quite rightly so. He called it a jumbo monstrosity, using the word jumbo after the uh, elephant that was being sold by London Zoo to Barnum Circus. The water tower was eventually built and stands 116 feet tall. It took 20 months to build, the work being completed in 1883. The design, well, it was by a man called Charles Clegg. But the name Jumbo has stuck ever since. So next time you ride on a Jumbo jet, just remember that the phrase was coined here in Colchester by the Reverend John Irvin. <laughs> give you a few facts about this structure. 1.2 million bricks were used in its construction, 819 tonnes of stone and cement. It holds 221,000 gallons or a million and 69 litres. That's getting on for half the water in an Olympic swimming pool. This thing is colossal. It's not colossal, it's jumbo. Let's give it its proper name. This is a jumbo construction. And standing underneath it, looking up, really is um, quite awe-inspiring, really. Anyway, this is where I end this vlog. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.